Howdy Powerhouse, thank you so much for joining us this morning. This is Pastor Noel Owar, and it's a great honor for me to bring God's Word to us this morning. Also, at the end of this service, we're going to share in the Lord's communion. As you know, every first Sunday of the, of the month, it's our tradition to, to sit at the Lord's table together. This morning, we are continuing with our series won't you be my neighbor? In this series, we are exploring how to bring the love of God in every neighborhood where God has placed us. I believe that God wants to use us to bring his, his presence in every neighborhood. And today we're going to look at a story in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. The book of 1 Kings chapter 17. The background in this story is uh, King Ahab was the king of Israel. And King Ahab was married to a woman by the name Jezebel. Jezebel influenced King Ahab to bring the worship of other gods to Israel. Remember, back in Exodus, God had told the children of Israel that you shall worship no other god except me. I will be your provider. I will bless you. I will be with you in every way. I will love you. They had given uh, themselves to the worship of God. But Ahab and Jezebel introduced the worship of Baal and another god called Asherah. Baal and Asherah were gods of fertility. That Ahab and Jezebel said, if you worship these gods, Baal and Asherah, your crops will be fertile. Your families will be blessed. Your jaws will be blessed. Your lives will be blessed. You don't need to worship the God of Israel. So they turned the whole nation away from worshiping the God of Israel and started worshiping Baal looking to Baal to provide for them. This idolatry caused God to shut down the heavens. God said there will be no rain uh, for a period of time until you learn that Baal and Asherah cannot provide for you. I am the only source. You know, God wants us to know, even in this crisis, that he is the source. He is the one who can bless us. This, you know, gods, our, our gods like the gods we worship here in America, like prosperity, the gods like pleasure, and other gods that you and I know cannot provide for us. They don't have the divine capability to give us what we need. So in this story, God sends the prophet Elijah to a desperate woman, widow to be exact, who lived in a dark neighborhood during this period of severe famine. And by the way, that famine led to an economic crisis. So God sent, sent Elijah there and Elijah the prophet challenges this woman to obey God's word by being generous. When this woman became generous with the little that she had, God blessed her. She experienced God as the source of everything that she needed. You know, one of the things that God wants us to experience during this time of crisis is that he is the source of everything we need. We don't need to look at any other God. He is the source. God wants every neighborhood in this state, in this country, indeed in the whole world, to know that he is the source of everything that we need. Do you believe that God is the source? I want to challenge you that during this time of this crisis, take time and reflect 
on this truth or rather the reality that other gods cannot provide for you. So let's, 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 let's dive into this, this story. First Kings chapter 17. You know, this is the first time that Elijah is, uh, is, is introduced in the Bible. The first time we, we read about him. And we, we are not told about his family background or anything. He just like he busts into the scene. Says, verse 1 of 1 Kings chapter 17. Now, Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the, in the next few years except at, at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here, turn eastwards, and hide in the Kerith ravine east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to Kerith ravine east of Jordan and stayed there. The ravens provided, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. God provided for his prophet in a very unusual and surprising way. God used the raven to bring him bread in the morning and in the evening. God went and contracted the raven catering company. And he told Mr. Raven, this, 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 uh, this bird that does not even share uh, the, it's his, his or her food with our with with little ones, said, I want you to go to Kereth Ravine in the morning, deliver us a sandwich, and then in the evening, I want you to go back and deliver a sandwich. God is very, very, very powerful. He is our source and he's able to provide for us in very unusual and surprising ways. My prayer for you is that may you experience this God as your source, providing for you in very unusual ways. Verse 7 says that sometime later, the brook dried up because there, there had been no rain in the land. The brook dried up because there was this severe crisis. The brook dried up because God had shut down the heavens. The brook dried up because God wanted Elijah to experience him even in deeper ways. Have your brooks dried up? For some of you, I know your businesses have dried up. For some of you, your income has dried up. For some of you, you are probably experiencing uh, dryness in some relationships. For some of you are experiencing dryness in some areas. There are things which need, which have dried up in your, in, in your life. Don't be alarmed when those things dry up. Because look at what God does with Elijah. When this source had dried up, don't panic. What did God do? Verse 8 says, The word of the Lord came to him and told him, Go at once to Zarephath in Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow there in that place to supply you with food. When the brook dried up, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord is what spoke and gave him direction to know what to do, how to navigate uh, that very difficult circumstance. My prayer for you and for me is the word of the Lord will give me uh, what I need, the direction that I need to take, the wisdom that I need to have, the insight that I need to have to know how to navigate seasons of dryness. Don't remove the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to the prophet Elijah and directed him to go 
to Zarephath. Zarephath in Sidon. Now Sidon or Sidon, or some of you may call, may call it, was the, is, was the place where Jezebel came from. It was the capital of the worship of Baal. It was a dark region. God sent Elijah to Zarephath and told him that in Zarephath, there is someone who is there. She is a widow. I have been talking to this widow. This widow and me have been having a fellowship. And I have told her to, to, to provide for you. That God will provide for you, Prophet Elijah, from this very dark place. Outside of your own territory, the territory that you know. Outside of the Israel territory. I'm sending you to the Gentile country. So the prophet Elijah went there. So he went to Zarephath, verse 10, and when he came to the town gate, he found a widow. Let's talk a little bit about this widow. This for me means a lot. The God sent the prophet to this widow. The first thing I learn is God wants us to know that every person and every individual has dignity before him. That he can work through anyone. He can work in anyone. He can be involved in anyone's life. It doesn't matter whether you are in Israel territory, whether you are in Gentile territory. It doesn't matter. You have dignity. God wants you to know that you matter to him. And the other thing I learned is that God knows your address, just like God knew the address of this woman. God knew that she's a widow. God knew that she's in Zarephath. And God knew exactly what she was going through. God knows your situation. He knows what you're going through. And he wants to be a part of it. So Elijah finds a widow there. This widow was gathering sticks. And he calls to, to the widow and asks her, would you bring me a little water in a jar? So Elijah goes to the widow and says, hey, I'm thirsty. I've been on this journey for so long. And uh, would you bring me water in a jar? You know, when I read this, my mind went to a story in John chapter 4, where Jesus asked another Gentile woman, a Samaritan, to give him water. And the woman in John chapter 4 was surprised at this request. I can imagine this woman also. She was surprised, like, you are an Israelite prophet. How can you even be talking to me? How can you even be asking me to give you water? Like, I, I don't think that we, we, we share anything. We should share anything because we don't associate with each other. But Elijah um, continued to speak to her. In verse 11, he says, As she was going to get it, that's the water, he called and said, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. Oh, this prophet, you're pushing it. He's pushing the envelope now. He just asked for water. And as a woman was leaving, he's like, Hey, and I need bread. Didn't Elijah know that it's famine, that people are going through a severe economic crisis? How do you begin to ask a widow, someone who did not have much, to even share with you? Why are you even challenging her to, to, to share with you? Let's look at the reason. The reason here is very powerful. And here is where our lesson is. As surely as the Lord lives, verse 12, the woman replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And you know what, Prophet Elijah? I am gathering a few sticks. Notice, notice her desperation. She says, I only have a little oil, a handful of flowers first, a little oil, 
and I'm gathering a few sticks. For this woman, her situation was desperate. It's like, I have nothing left. And you dare ask me to share with you? So, I'm going to home to make a meal for myself and for my son that we may eat and die. Wow. This woman was facing a desperate situation. It's like, I have nothing left. And here you are asking me. Here you are challenging me to share with you what I have. I don't have anything. Let me ask you, what is your situation right now? If you are to, if you are to, if you are the one who was speaking with Elijah, and if he asked you to, to share with him, what would you tell him? You know, it's important that you go right into your heart and you come up with what you would say. Do you have everything that you need? Maybe you are like this woman, everything that you have is a handful, a little, and a few. It's desperate. And yet, you're being challenged that that which you have, you share. Why was Elijah asking her to share? Look at verse 13. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. That's a word that you and I need to hear this time. Every neighborhood needs to hear that. That's a word that your neighbor needs to hear. Don't be afraid. Go home and do as I have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Again, going back to God's word. This is what God's word says to people like you who have little and who have been challenged to give. This is what he says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain to the land. In other words, God is saying that if you dare trust me with what you have, I will make sure, I will ensure that you are sufficiently provided for during this period of crisis. If you dare continue to, to provide for me. I, if, you dare continue, if you dare give what you have, share with the prophet, I will bless you immensely. God is challenging you and God is challenging me to step out and be generous in our neighborhoods, to step out and share the little that we have because through that, he's going to Bless us. We're going to experience him in ways we would never have experienced him before. We're going to experience his, him as the provision, not Baal or Asherah. God wants you and I to experience God as a source of everything that we need. So what do you have? What is it that you have that you can share? I want to challenge you to share whatever you have. Maybe. All you have is encouragement. Would you pick up the phone and call someone and encourage them? Maybe you have a little something in your food, in your, in, in your, in your food storage or whatever it is, pantry. Would you take some of that food, put it in a bag and go to your neighbor and, and leave at the door? Maybe you have time. You can go and shop for someone. Maybe God is calling you to be a prayer warrior at this time who's going to, to spend time in praying for others. When you do this, the principle is God says, I will bless you. Let me read a verse as I close in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. 
Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says this, A generous man or woman will prosper. He or she who refreshes others will he, or she, will he will himself or herself be refreshed. That generosity brings prosperity. And when you refresh others, you will be refreshed. So God wants to bless you as you bless others. Amen? This week, choose to do one generous thing. Reach out to a neighbor whom you've never known before, even a stranger, and bless them. Bless them whichever way God will tell you. Amen? Let me pray for us. Father, we are here before you. We ask you to bless us today and help us to be a blessing to others, Lord. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Let's now transition to the communion table.